Welcome back to the final review for the Return to Next Ramus mini set. This is all the remaining cards. We got Warlock, Rogue, Shaman, and boy, do we have some Druid cards we're going to talk about. Kicking it off, though, the freshly revealed Warlock cards. These guys are horrifying. This is no fins. Impossible. The, the, we've got too many puns in this one, but uh, these Murloc and imp hybrids here. I, I don't know what to make of these guys. They look so goofy to me. Uh, this is a new two mana spell. Give all friendly demons and uh, murlocs death rattle summon a 2 2 imp lock. And uh, the fact, of course, that uh, these uh, imp locks are presumably going to be both imps and murlocs does help make sure that this is beneficial to both sides of any given synergy. So if you're putting uh, Murlocs in your deck, if you're putting Imps in your deck, or maybe if you're just running Murlocs or Imps, this is still gonna be a card, whether you're doing a hybrid or each of those independently, this is a great way to shore up a board. I think Imp Lock in particular can go really wide quite efficiently and then use No Fins Impossible to give them that sticky leftover board to make sure they're there for that second wave, for the great location follow-up, for reform follow-ups so on and so forth. I don't know that I'm quite as convinced on the ability for Murlocs to be relevant right now in Warlock, uh, something maybe to keep an eye on for the future, but this does feel like a pretty good fit in Imp Warlock, although it is a little bit more curse leaning these days, but this could pull it a little bit more back towards pure Imp and uh, minion aggression, as opposed to a little bit of mix of both. So, I mean, yeah, this is like Soul of the Forest, but only two mana in this case. So, um, I don't know, man. I think this looks like a pretty high output card, pretty sticky that plays well to a lot of the sticky board synergies that uh, imps in particular are already looking to utilize. So, yes, this may be horrifying. Yes, these puns may have gone too far, but I do actually like this card quite a bit from a power level standpoint. So next up for Warlock is Plague Eruption, a new three mana spell. This one's gonna deal two damage to all minions. And if you've discarded a card this game, deal one more. So uh, this deal two to all minions, we've seen quite a few cards throughout Hearthstone's history that have uh, succeeded, frankly, at the, uh, the deal two range. And then I think once you've discarded, this feels really good. Dealing three uh, to a board for, for three mana is going to be a really efficient uh, wide board removal that's uh, going to hold up probably through the mid game rather nicely, which will give you opportunities to discard cards by the time you want to for the Plague Eruption. So we're getting this uh, assortment of discard cards in standard. We haven't really hit that critical mass yet where it feels like it's a good deck, but every little additional card like this that adds some power to that deck does feel nice. And this particular round of discard stuff hasn't been quite as like all in on aggression or board strategies. So even though this isn't like developing minions or, or, or playing for immediate tempo, it might still fit into that package rather nicely. That might be more of like a control deck or a hybrid that uh, is grinding people out over time and Plague Eruption could fit rather rather well into that game plan. But also we've seen some just generally good discard stuff like the card draw card right now. That one's really good. Scourge Supplies, is that the name of that? Uh, so even if you're not running like a full discard complement, you might have just a couple select really powerful cards. This is fine at a base. Once you hit that discard, it becomes really good. So um, yeah, I mean, I think Warlock is always looking for more control tools. There's always one or two Warlock decks that pop up that need removal. Plague Eruption feels like it could be a good fit for that world. So our final card here for Warlock is the Suspicious Peddler, a new two mana, two, three, undead. Battle cry, discover a one cost card. If your opponent guesses your choice, they get a copy. So this is playing to the Suspicious cards uh, from Castle Nathria. Also harkens back to the Dark Peddler as well with one cost card there. And uh, we've seen a couple of these see some play in Priest and Mage. I gotta say I'm not as sold on the Suspicious Peddler in this case. Those have some pretty high roll potentials. Getting a Legendary card can be really powerful. Getting a spell for Mage can be a great fit. I'm not convinced you're gonna be as happy to get a one cost card. We have seen some of these two mana get a one cost card things work in the past, but that's because it's had a really specific pool of powerful one cost things. The question is, is Warlock going to have a really powerful pool of one cost cards or is it mostly going to be uh, a bunch of random garbage neutral stuff it's not limited down to like spells for instance where you're making sure you're getting great things i think often you're going to get three pretty bad neutral 
neutral minions that you're not excited about so i think the consistency here will be pretty low i don't worry much about the downside of giving it to your opponent that's probably not a huge risk for this one but i just don't think you're going to have a reason to run this one yourself i think most decks will figure out pretty quickly that the suspicious peddler just isn't really offering them anything all that useful all right moving on over to druid boy you're all going to be excited about this one it's the death beetle a six mana six six undead beast with taunt and mana thirst 11 gain plus four plus four and charge so of course uh right now in in Hearthstone you can get to 11 mana thanks to the guff hero card but that will actually be rotating out of standard format very soon in in april with the next expansion assuming everything goes as normal guff will be gone and that means that as we currently know it, the Death Beetle would have no way to activate that Mana Thirst. Because remember, you can't coin up or innervate up to 11 mana. You're capped at 10 without something increasing that cap. Uh, so, you know, theoretically, this card could have a very short window. But the flavor text for this card says, well, that'll be useless next expansion. Wink, wink. Suggesting there that uh, perhaps there will be some additional uh ways to gain extra mana in druid oh boy people are gonna be really excited about that one i know and of course uh the death beetle here is pretty nuts uh, a tin tin with charge for six mana is incredibly efficient uh that could indeed be a pretty powerful finisher i'll be honest i don't know that it actually keeps up with the other kinds of finishers druid has been able to, to utilize particularly when it comes to extra mana often there's all kinds of crazy combos and doubling effects and stuff i'm not sure the death beetle will actually scale all that well comparative to those other cards which means a vast majority of the time it's actually going to be a little awkward and, and 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 clunky until you get whatever kind of mana enabler might be uh, available you're certainly not going to feel great playing this as a 6-6 six, six taunt so it might just be sitting around for a while until you get that extra mana increase available and even then is it a great finisher or is it just a solid card to play i mean it's definitely very good card to play let's let's be clear a, a tin tin charger is really good but does that conditionality does that sitting around and waiting for it uh does that mean it's gonna be worth it when there might just be other more powerful things to do instead some crazy card combinations uh it's hard to write a card like this off it, it's hard to ever say this is not gonna work because it's a six mana 10 10 charge but um i'm a little doubtful i i do think druid does a lot of broken stuff i'm not sure this quite keeps up despite how obscene it looks at uh, sort of face value so next up here is another druid card <laughs> it's life from death six mana nature spell draw three cards and infuse six this costs one so remember infuse means you're killing off minions while this is in hand and then it becomes this just incredibly efficient one cost draw three also got some nature spell synergies right now in druid with things like scale of onyxia i mean obviously this could be a really powerful mid to late game reload engine that's going to be pretty easy to get to one mana and that makes the card really really good I could see some worlds where without things like Scale of Onyxia, maybe it's a little bit harder for Druid to activate this, but they certainly are great with wide token boards as well. So even if this is just uses reload in a token deck, I don't think Infuse 6 is crazy. Definitely a lot worse in a top deck scenario, like all infused cards we know, but that hasn't held infused cards back. As long as they've had sufficiently high rewards, they've been able to be run, and I certainly think this has a sufficiently high reward because one mana is just absolutely obscene for this one particularly with druid already cheating mana frankly sometimes druid won't even care to spend six mana on this because they just have so much mana to work with anyway we see that with nourish already in druid so maybe even at a baseline this isn't terrible and then it's completely bonkers when it's working so uh yeah this looks like a really strong card and then finally for druid here we have rake a new one mana spell this is kind of like the new savagery remember that card i haven't seen it forever this one gives your hero plus two attack this turn though so you get a little bonus start and then you'll deal your damage equal to your hero's attack to a minion so at a base level of course this is a gain two and deal two which honestly that's a surprising amount of little utility just chipping through some boards sometimes druid has trouble finding cards that deal well with those sorts of things wrath has kind of lived in that space where you just got a wrath for three sometimes and you hate it 
rake could be a nice little little filler there and then you get the bonus plus two attack as well which of course you could use to tidy up an additional minion or maybe just weave in a little bit of face damage and we also currently have the quest line still in standard format remember the druid quest is all about gaining attack hasn't really ever taken off but this is one last little push that could help a quest line deck be a little bit better. I'm not convinced the power level on this one's so high that this is tuned enough to really change the fate of an entire deck like Questline Druid. So I don't really think Quest Druid's gonna get there. Is this a card that even gets run in regular Druids? I doubt it. I think most Druid decks are just about getting mana and then recovering and swinging later, as opposed to all of this little filler stuff. But occasionally, you know, discovering this card, finding it off stuff, it will be relevant and important. It'll be a nice card to grab from time to time. I just don't think it'll probably show up in all too many deck lists. So moving over to Shaman, I think we have some crazy cards to talk about here. This is Blazing Transmutation, a new one mana fire spell. Uh, this one's gonna allow you to choose a minion and then discover one that costs one more to transform it into. So we've got an evolve effect here finally with some choice. You get to pick what result you're going to get, which of course is going to greatly, dramatically improve the quality of the minions that you're rolling into. And of course, there are some really specific roles as well, playing your nine mana Knoll in Evolve Shaman, as we often see, and then using a Blazing Transmutation on it, you're going to get to pick your 10 cost card that it transforms into. And uh, with the addition of Thaddeus Monstrosity, which we recently reviewed, uh, that has some crazy hand discount potential, you're going to be able to pick your Thaddeus. I read somebody did some math. 37% of the time, you're going to get a Thaddeus offered. So, you know, in more than a third of instances when you transform a 9-mana Knoll, you get a crazy Thaddeus that discounts your hand and you can maybe do even more busted stuff. And when you donate Thaddeus, there's of course other just great 10 drops you can take as well. Currently things like Localar. Now, uh, there was a question about whether or not things like Neptulon would show up in this. Currently, any Colossals are not in the onboard pools for things like Evolves. You can discover them and add them to hand, but you can't randomly summon them on board. Even though this lets you pick and it's a little distinct from random Evolves, apparently uh, they're going to make sure you still can't get Colossals off of this one. So there's not going to be any Neptulon opportunities on Blazing Transmutation. But regardless, there's still just going to be some great roles. Thaddeus, Chief among them, I think, an example in this very mini set, which looks really, really scary. Super just run away with games potential, kind of broken potential. Now, outside of exactly that 9 into 10 scenario, you know, a single mana cost increase is not quite as useful on average unless you've just got something crazy to cheat into play. So it's really the discount on the Knoll that makes that possible for Evolve Shaman to feel so good now. I don't really think this will still feel great outside of some of those really specific manipulations like that. Because on average, increasing, even if you're getting to pick the unit, the, the odds of getting an effect that's really valuable or really meaningful in a given game state probably isn't all that high. And you'd rather just evolve across a board as opposed into a singular minion or perhaps jump multiple mana costs so that you can more reliably gain a bunch of stats. So, uh, you know, this card is basically really feast or famine, I guess. I think there's gonna be some crazy moments, crazy high rolls, game defining hits on this one. And of course, because of that, it will be very good and it will be run a ton. But for instance, as soon as Noel rotates out of uh, Evolve Shaman soon, maybe transmutation won't make as much sense. Maybe it falls off really hard and it's in that famine stage where not many decks are able to run this. So next up for Shaman, I, I actually think this card's totally insane. Uh, we're gonna talk about a cold storage New one mana frost spell. This one allows you to freeze a minion and add a copy of it to your hand. So that old uh, Murabi effect. But uh, of course, in this instance, it doesn't demand a six mana overhead like Murabi did. We had to play the Murabi and then still freeze stuff in order to get that effect. In fact, here it's only one mana to pull off this effect. So, I mean, the most obvious utilization of this that might come to mind is, hey, I'm gonna freeze my opponent's stuff because I like stalling out their big minions, preventing their minions from attacking me, and I'm gonna get whatever awesome minion that I froze. So I'm gonna freeze that big 8-8 and I'm gonna get my own 8-8 and I'm really happy to get some value out of it. 
and th I think that's actually a great example of a good use case. It's it's very similar to wind chill that's already in Shaman in that scenario. Now, I, I would argue in that instance, you're probably happier to draw a card from your deck as opposed to get a random thing from your opponents. A few exclusions probably apply there. Things like, you know, uh, uh, a final stage Astalor is a great copy uh, for cold storage if your opponent plays it right. There's there's obviously some examples that might be better than your own deck, but you know, this and Windchill are pretty close when used against enemy stuff, I would say. But that's not actually what scares me for this card. I think this card has a lot of potential being used on your own stuff and creating some crazy like loops and combos and just obscene turns because you get extra copies of your own stuff. We've all seen already with things like Zola, where you can uh, copy all of your own uh, Zola the Gorgon. You can copy your stuff and get extra versions of really powerful plays. We see that with like Bran and Zola now and Astalors and historically whatever else might come to mind. But this is a one mana way to do the same thing. So you play some awesome battle cry minion and you get an extra one of it because you don't really care about freezing it because it's a battle cry, who cares? But you get that battle cry back again. So you're able to run more versions of battle cries than you're supposed to. And then remember, Shaman still has things like Macaw. So this is extra ways to get extra battle cries. So, you know, we've seen these wide board freezes in Shaman and we hate that they did it four turns in a row. Well, now what if they did it six turns in a row because they just copy more Macaws? Or what if there's some crazy turn where you've already played an Astalor and then you Macaw and then you copy a Macaw and then you Macaw and then you copy a Macaw and then you Macaw. I know I spent too much mana there, but you get the idea over multiple turns. You could play like four or five straight Astalors or something because you keep creating extra copies of cards that you're not normally allowed to have. So I can just envision all these Macaw things, Bolner things, Astalor things, cards we haven't even dreamed up yet. Getting extra copies of them might absolutely break what you're normally supposed to be able to do in a deck. And if that effect was like three or four mana, I think it would be really hard to weave into turns. I think it'd be hard to do anything reliably there. But at only one mana, I don't know, man. The potential here for me is really scary. I feel like somebody's going to figure out a way to break something because they got four copies of a card they're only supposed to have two of, or maybe two copies of a legendary, or three copies of a legendary you're only supposed to have one of. Uh, clearly, uh, there is some real frightening potential there. I wouldn't even be shocked if at some point this card got changed to say freeze an enemy minion to prevent some of the crazy setups and shenanigans that might be possible. So I don't know exactly what those turns look like right now. I just feel like there's a lot of potential for this card to do very, very scary stuff. And then finally for Shaman here, we have the Frostfin Chomper, a three mana, two, three elemental Murloc, fusing these uh, dual type synergies and, and mechanics together. Once again, this time Battlecry, if you played an elemental last turn, summon three, one, one Murlocs. Uh, so this does work. You get yourself a really nice board of Murlocs, which of course you like having lots of Murlocs for buffs and follow-ups and stuff. But uh, honestly, I, I just think this card is going to be so difficult to activate reliably and frankly be happy when you do because you're like alternating between elementals and murlocs. If you're playing murlocs, you need a lot of murlocs on board and the elementals aren't going to be helping you. And if you're playing elementals, you're probably not going to be wanting to weave in turns with murlocs in between. I mean, this guy doesn't cost you much, but presumably your deck is going to have a little bit of both. So they're each hurting the consistency of each other. Uh, you know, Shaman does have two pretty good aggro-y packages. Remember the uh, Forge and the Barons uh, elemental package was really good for a while, got some nerfs and stuff, and now we've got Murlocs, which are okay, and Shaman. Uh, so, you know, it kind of makes sense, but they just don't really mix well together in my mind, and a card like this is not rewarding enough to force that mixture together. I don't think you can just take two disparate kind of aggro decks and stick them together and hope that it works. I don't think it... It's uh, it's clean as something like we see with maybe mechs and dragons in Paladin. Both of those feel like they don't really need as much uh, codependence within themselves. Like that, you know, they aren't requiring as much 
internal synergies within their packages, unlike elementals and murlocs, which I think do require those internal synergies within themselves to really feel powerful. In other words, the, the mechs and the dragons are each a little bit more self-sufficient as packages, so sticking them together probably doesn't feel as awkward to me as uh, as elementals and murlocs do. So uh, I, I don't really think this card or this kind of idea will really get anywhere. I think this one feels pretty weak. Moving over to Rogue here, we have the Jolly Roger, a one mana one three undead pirate uh, with a nice effect here. After your hero attacks, summon a one one undead pirate. So uh, some attack synergies here and some undead synergies here and some pirate synergy, I think in particular here. And Pirate Rogue, you know, is not really anything that's been sticking around as a powerful option. Rogue does so many crazy things this last set or two. Pirates haven't really made the cut. I don't think this card's going to suddenly launch any sort of pirate decks into play. I don't think you're suddenly going to see Hook Tusk because this card showed up. It doesn't feel like it's that powerful to me. But honestly, this card just pumps out a lot of potential tempo and bodies on board. So even if it's not right now or this is a pirate card, could this just be a general use card? Does it have to have pirate synergies? Can you play this on one and hero power on two and be really happy just to get some stats moving Particularly, I think in a post-rotation world, these sorts of early game minions and bodies on board go a lot further when there are less hyper-synergistic packages in play that are defining the meta. Something like Jolly Roger to me feels like it's probably just a great card to play on one and get things rolling in a more aggressive deck. Any additional synergies for pirates or undead might just be a bonus because you're just always hero powering on two anyway with Rogue, it feels like. And this guy's a great enabler. And that three health total means he's he's often very likely to stick around into turn two. So um, I would say don't get lured or trapped by the potential synergy plays here, but maybe just a great general utility card moving forward. So next up here, we have Ransack, a new zero mana spell. Uh, this one deals one damage to a minion. And if you've played a card from another class this turn, you can deal four instead. So uh, for Thief Rogue decks, this could potentially be a really efficient uh, swing sort of card on board. Clear something for, for zero mana. And of course, we know with Miracle Rogue stuff, any sort of zero mana card can be really great to chain into your big location plays, uh, your big Draka plays, etc. So any fuel to the fire there could be nice. Um, we have seen certainly some thievery mixed in with, with that as well. So you might even be able to enable this for four, although... Maybe just being a zero mana spell is more important in that case. And sometimes just having a one damage ping is fine for zero if you're activating a lot of other synergies. So look, those decks aren't exactly great right now. Rogue has, has certainly fallen off a little since um, Thief Rogue in particular has fallen off a little since uh, the most recent round of nerfs. Finally, after after being really good for a really long time, uh, Miracle Rogue still good at high legend for the record, but less thievery package, more miracle package. Is this good enough to make the cut in the in the miracle package? Boy, I, I don't think so. You don't want too much just little junk. You still need to be able to make meaningful plays per card. So I don't think this would make the cut in miracle. And uh, I don't know that you need it in Thief as it currently exists. Now that said, it's still an efficient card for the future, right? Any kind of spell synergies that pop up, anything that activates on spell cast, any other miracle type lines, you got to keep an eye on this card in the future. So I don't really think this is going to get played right now too much, but over the next uh, year plus, it's certainly got some possibilities. You always have to keep an eye out for zero mana things that can enable lots of other opportunities. And then our last card here for Rogue is the Stitched Creation, a three mana one one undead with three different keywords here to gain stats. First up, you have combo to gain plus two plus two. So you know, if you coin this on turn two, uh, it's a three three, uh, which you're not very excited about three mana three three, of course. Uh, if it's chilling in hand for a while and you infuse it twice, it's gonna gain a three three. So of course, if you combo it and have infused it, then you're gaining five, five, which makes it a three mana six, six. I think that's probably the most common state for this card where you're playing it sometimes like on turn four or five or so, and you're getting a three mana six, six, which, you know, that's pretty solid. I gotta say it's, it's, 
it's good. I, it, to be honest, it doesn't really seem to keep up with a lot of the crazy things Rogue has been doing lately. It feels like 3 minutes 6 6 isn't that scary anymore. But, you know, if you got enough minions running that this infuse is hitting reliably, then uh, that seems okay. That said, a lot of Rogue decks might not actually activate this infuse all that reliably. Now, finally, for Mana Thirst 8, you can gain another 4-4 four, four if you play this super late in the game. At that point, it's a 10-10 for 3 mana, which obviously incredibly efficient but impact wise that late in the game i just don't think a three mana 10 10 is going to make enough difference people have already developed tons of game plans they'll already be killing you or they'll have already found really efficient removal for this sort of card so ultimately you know i think this has a couple turn window where it does feel solid although i still don't think it actually feels all that great and i worry that rogue decks are gonna line up for more synergistic game plans and this might just feel a little bit left out. Like, okay, yeah, it's a fine body, but I'm trying to do things. I've got a, I've got a plan to enact, and the stitch creation doesn't really fall in line with my goals for a given deck or build or synergy. So uh, I don't think we're gonna see a ton of the stitch creation, frankly, despite being, uh, you know, potentially a three mana 10-10. Who could have guessed such a thing would ever be said? No Fins Impossible is a four-star card. Plague Eruption is a four-star card. Suspicious Peddler is a two-star card. Death Beetle is a three-star card. Life from Death is a four-star card. Rake is a two-star card. Blazing Transmutation is a four-star card. Cold Storage is a five-star card. Frostfin Chomper is a two-star card. Stitch Creation is a three-star card. Jolly Roger is a four-star card. Ransack is a four star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this mini set review. I think we're all done. All the cards have been revealed. So Tuesday, we'll jump in and try all this stuff out. Got some crazy decks to uh, experiment with. We'll try some duels shortly thereafter as well. So excited to give all these cards a try. Is the Death Beetle going to be nuts? Curious to hear your thoughts on that. More in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And until next time, game on.